Okay, welcome to uh, lecture number two uh, of ES300, um, Energy in the Environment. Uh, today, we're going to tackle very basic accounting and, and project finance. So one note uh, before I get to the main part of the lecture. Um, uh, at the beginning of each lecture, right after the title slide, um, there are going to be a list of questions. Uh, not many of the questions will themselves appear on the final exam, but they are representative of the types of questions that will be on the final exam, and they would be good ones to study in preparation. So here are today's. Um, what does it mean uh, to finance new infrastructure? Uh, what is financial risk? And what does it mean for borrowing money? And then how can financing decisions and or financial risk um, impact the cost of energy for consumers. So first, really basic balance sheet accounting. Um, a balance sheet is basically a snapshot of a firm's financial health uh, before or after a performance period. So we could think about the calendar year as being broken up into four quarters. So you might hear about financial quarters uh, if you're uh, listening to um, you know, NPR or, uh, you know, PBS NewsHour or CNN or um, you're reading on the internet and Bloomberg or the Wall Street Journal. Um, and so what this diagram is meant to show is that the, the yellow bars or rectangles um, represent the issuance of balance sheets. Um, and so they're, they're snapshots at the beginning and end of, of every financial quarter. And what's happening in the intervening period um, is that money's coming in, uh, which we might refer to as revenues, and then also some money's going out, uh, which we might refer to as, ex as expenses or costs. So balance sheets can be useful, um, in particular for understanding or providing some insight uh, into a company's financial health. Um, and it's important here, I think, to be specific about um, what I mean by financial health. Um, in particular, it could refer to the, the profitability of a company. So the, the ability of a company to either distribute uh, profits or dividends to um, shareholders or the people that own the company or, or reinvest those profits in, in order to uh, pay for some sort of uh, expansion, um, to acquire new money or capital. In other words, to borrow money um, and also to pay its bills on time. So a company may have already borrowed a lot of money um, and have acquired uh, a, a significant amount of debt uh, to pay for some sort of previous expansion or infrastructure. Um, and now it may be responsible for paying back that debt over uh, a period of time. And it's very important uh, for companies to be able to pay uh, back debt um, on time um, and reliably. So there are two parts uh, to a balance sheet. Um, there are assets and liabilities. Um, and if you wanted to think about it in a really simplistic way, um, we might say that assets are the good stuff and liabilities are the bad stuff. So assets are sources of economic value. Um, examples might be cash or, or, or liquid money, um, as well as uh, physical assets, so infrastructure, um, that a company might own that does have value, um, but is not said to be liquid. So you can't use it to immediately um, sort of pay your bills. Uh, liabilities represent sources of future costs or expenses. That could mean um, money that you owe your employees um, or outstanding debt. Um, so if you have borrowed a lot of money in the past and you're responsible for paying it back, at some point in the future, um, that is a liability or a future cost that uh, a company would incur. So if we uh, look at the, the left-hand side of a balance sheet, the assets, and subtract a company's uh, liabilities on the right-hand side, what we're left with is called owner's equity. A company's equity is owned by what's called shareholders. Uh, so those, these are the people that own a company. Um, and when we talk about a share, a stock share, that is simply a legal right uh, to a piece of a company's equity. Uh, so that may bring up a question uh, in your mind, or maybe not. 
um, which is what do we mean when we when we when we talk about stock prices? Um, are stock prices simply equal to accounting equity? In other words, assets minus liabilities divided by the number of shares. Um, and the answer there is no. Uh, stock prices are not necessarily tied uh, to owner's equity or assets minus liabilities. The stock prices are a factor of the expected future earnings uh, of, a, of a company. Um, and that expectation is set by investors. And sometimes that's uh, rational and sometimes it's more emotional and psychological. So if the market thinks that a company um, could do well in the future and, and be profitable, uh, it may have a, a high stock price, even though it has low owner's equity. Um, and if um, the market thinks that uh, a company is, is not going to do well in the future, it may have uh, a lower stock price. Another way of, of thinking about equity is, is, is that it's technically the amount of money that the owners of a company, again, the shareholders, would be left with if all the assets were liquefied or sold to so cash plus all the infrastructure. Imagine if you were a business and you owned a lot of um, you know, factories or other types of infrastructure that had value and you could put, you could sell them to someone. All the money um, that you could get uh, for that infrastructure plus your cash, cash, and then you pay off all your debts, that remaining amount of money um, would technically be the owner's equity. So low or even negative equity is not necessarily bad. Remember, balance sheets are just sort of a snapshot of a, of a company's health. Um, it might mean that um, a company just recently borrowed a lot of money, so they might have a lot more liabilities. Um, or maybe it means that they just distributed a lot of money or dividends to shareholders, so they have fewer cash assets. Um, so we can't tell everything from uh, balance sheets in terms of a company's health. However, if you if you saw really, really low equity, could be a warning, right? It could also mean that a company is losing money um, and has not been profitable. Uh, and it also might indicate um, that a company could have trouble paying their bills in the future. Uh, and we're going to return uh, to this idea of having trouble paying your bills as an important concept in just a minute. So before we get to that, um, I want to ask a question, which is how would an electric utility um, treat a power plant, a physical power plant on their balance sheet? Where would it show up? And the answer is that it would show up in two different places. Um, a power plant we would consider to be an asset. It has value um, because it can produce electricity that a utility could sell and make money. Um, so it's a piece of infrastructure, and infrastructure ends up on the asset side of the balance sheet. It would also show up on the liability side, potentially, as debt or money that the company borrowed in the past in order to pay for the construction of the power plant. So one thing, one really important thing to realize about uh, the energy industry in general, especially the electric power industry, is that it is capital intensive. And you might hear me say that word, that phrase, a lot this semester. Capital intensive means that it costs a tremendous amount of money to build something. So utilities, electric utilities, own and operate infrastructure that costs billions and billions of dollars. Uh, and so what that means for utilities balance sheets um, is that a lot they have a lot of infrastructure uh, on the asset side and they have a lot of debt on the liability side. And so what happens uh, if Duke Energy wants to, to build a, um, a new power plant is that in year zero, in other words, the year when they want to start construction on the power plant, um, they borrow money from a lender. So not necessarily a single lender, a bank, but they borrow the money um, in year zero to build the power plant. And then what happens in year one through 25, and so we're imagining that in year one through 25, that's the lifetime of the power plant, um, the utility is using that power plant to sell electricity to customers. And customers deliver money to the utility. Uh, and then the utility can pay back the lender. Uh, 
And they don't just pay back the amount of money that it costs to build the power plant. They pay a little bit extra, and that's the interest on the money that they, they borrowed. So this is what we mean when we talk about infrastructure, especially electric power infrastructure, being financed. When you finance something, that means that you're, you're funding it using borrowed money. And the borrowed money has to be paid back over a long period of time. The details here about how infrastructure uh, is financed can have huge, huge impacts. Number one, it impacts the price of electricity for consumers. And number two, and this is perhaps more important for the, uh, the objective that we talked about last time in terms of reducing carbon emissions, um, it can have really big impacts on strategic decisions about, uh, that utilities make. For example, about when to retire a coal plant and to replace it with something cleaner. A lot of that can be tied into the decisions uh, to finance infrastructure, and we're going to talk more about that. So where does the money to build power plants, for example, come from? And we talked, to, I, I referenced a lender, this mysterious lender, and I said it wasn't necessarily a bank. So where does this money come from? So in general, there are two sources of where electric utilities can get money. There's debt and equity. Debt is a contractual obligation to pay back money with interest. Um, so when we talk about borrowing money, um, that's usually what we're, talk we're talking about is debt. And if you don't pay that money back, you go bankrupt, just sort of as a rule of thumb. Uh, equity is a little bit different. Um, equity, um, as it sort of implies, is when a utility sort of borrows money from itself, right? So if there's owner's equity, so assets are um, larger than liabilities and there's uh, some cash that's been saved up um, that could be distributed to shareholders as a dividend, um, a utility might use some of that money uh, to pay for new infrastructure. Uh, and so in this case, the utility is sort of borrowing money from itself, from the shareholders. Um, now, in this, with equity, there's no firm obligation to pay that back, um, but there is a trade-off between debt and equity, and we're going to get to that a little bit later in this, in this lecture.